<laughs> All right. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Nomadic Timbo and today I'm going to be talking to my friend here, Rosie, about ways in which uh, you can basically adjust to living in an expat community after traveling solo for a while. First of all, Rosie, good morning. Good morning, Tim. And how are you today? Oh, I'm great. Molly and I are great. We're yeah, having a lovely yeah. time. Yes, I think she wants to take part in the discussion. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, more than welcome. Absolutely. Back. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. So, so basically, um, you know, you did a lot of traveling before you were part of this expat community here in Sri Lanka. Yeah. So, uh, could you tell us a little bit about it, Rosie? Or like your journey, briefly? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean... You and I were fortunate enough to meet, what, over three years ago here in, in Sri Lanka. <laughs> <laughs> Watching it. <laughs> still, still here. Still, still here. <laughs> um, yeah, and I've been very, very... Um, it, it, my whole adult life has been kind of... One country is very naturally flown onto the next. And um, that journey kind of started when I was 16, first time going abroad and uh, it just continued on through there, usually quite... You started at a very young age. Yeah, I mean we never went abroad as children um, because you know from a big family it was always like our parents were great and we went on holiday in the UK but um, yeah I so went to Malawi when I was 16 and then the next place, you know, living it up in Ibiza, so what, <laughs> what a contrast, a bit of a contrast, a lot yeah, of contrast yeah. but, you know, why not, got to have the yin and the yang, yeah, right? Absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> and uh, we were talking earlier on, uh, I, I, think that, I think it's safe to say that there's a lot of people who, can, who can't really claim that Malawi is the first country that they've ever been to. Hmm, yeah. I think you might be one of the only people who can, can claim that, seriously. Yeah, well it definitely, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Definitely put things into perspective and a good starting point yeah, for, sure. you know, coming out of your teenage years, going into your adult years, and you know, when you're that age, you see, see people that are now our age. Yeah. yeah, they know what's going on. Did you have? Did we you, don't do you do think? We. Uh, <laughs> no, exactly. Do you think it? Do you think it helped you mature that much faster, just in that yeah. space of time? One hundred percent. You know, it's putting things into perspective, or you see different different cultures, different communities yeah. and how they have what we perceive mm -hmm. as nothing tangible. Yeah. But they'll they'll give you everything, you know. Yeah, and yeah. maybe it's a smile but yeah. And it's so it brings wonderful conversations to many, many chats for sure. Absolutely. Um, and b before you came here as well, I mean, well, you, you did like a lot of different trips, but you spent a bit of time in China, right? Yeah, yeah. I used to live in China again, mm. just randomly ended up there. Uh, ended up living in China for three and a half years. And it took a while to really establish a community when sure. I first arrived. Um, mm. It was, I, I just had uh, local Chinese friends, which which was great, but when you're 22 and you're in a country where people don't speak the language, sure, yeah. it's gotten, you know, easier over the last probably 10 years from when I first went there in, in 2011. Yeah. Um, but even just, you know, having a joke with someone. Yeah, sometimes so they just don't get the humor. The banter's just, just a little bit, yeah different worlds literally but um, yeah ended up staying there for three and a half years mainly fell in love with the language and I was teaching English as a foreign language to children and had a really great community of uh, older friends at the gym all local uh, friends at, at the school I was teaching in and then also expats as yeah. well so, so you so you had like a little bit of a taste of what it was like even prior to coming to Sri Lanka then, yeah like an expat community. Yeah, yeah definitely and how much Especially in a country of such um, such diverse cu uh, culture from what maybe we've grown up in, yes. and also on that language front as well, um, your your friends are they they are your your family. You totally, know? totally. Um, so it's really it's a really precious yeah. relationship. Yeah, I guess then you, you kind of already had like hints of what it was going to be like. So when you made the transition from going from the Chinese community that you were experiencing 
I guess it probably wasn't too difficult for you then to adjust to this community in Sri Lanka, even though there was like a slight difference, I guess. Yeah, uh, for sure. It's I mean, here is a piece of cake yeah, compared to China. Yeah, yeah. Mainly because in Sri Lanka, we're, you know, we're surrounded by clean air. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes a big difference. Yeah. People are like, oh, it's quite dirty, it's quite polluted. Yes. You have no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's good when you get those warnings because like as soon as you arrive and it's like a massive pleasant surprise when you get here. Yeah, uh, and obviously people here generally speak English. Yeah. We were chatting before about in the north of Sri Lanka uh, where English isn't as widely spoken yeah. mainly because there's less tourists. Yeah. It's further away from Colombo. Um, but so I moved to Australia from China yeah. and my I moved there to be with my best friends and they they would laugh at me because the toilets are amazing. You know, the public <laughs> toilets are, they're so clean and there's toilet paper. Yeah. And you know, it is it we do take these things for granted Definitely. in in our Definitely. in our wonderful Western world, you know. Mm -hmm. Civilized and things. Yeah, and yeah <laughs> that's I couldn't I couldn't agree with you more. I couldn't agree with you more. So um like, I, I guess the big question that I wanted to ask, because this is because of my own personal experience, like me, for example, I've been traveling as a nomad for like more than a decade. But like over the last few years, I've wondered what it's like to properly like live in an expat community and because of COVID, uh, as well as like, you know, certain decisions I made, this was the opportunity to properly experience it. And even though it's been incredible, I have to admit, it did take a little bit of time to adjust uh, because I was so used to, well, not going from place to place to place day after day, but like just maybe, but I mean, I would only spend a matter of weeks or months and then I would move on or even days sometimes. So I guess that was like the biggest, uh, yeah, that, 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 that's what made it a little bit weird for me to start with. So I'm just wondering, even though you'd already experienced uh, like like a community in China before, did you feel there was any adjustments that you needed to make, or did it just, or was it just smooth sailing right from the very start? Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of happened quite naturally. And even though I'd lived in China in one place and the same in Australia, here when I'd been in Sri Lanka, it had been very seasonally for six months in in Sri Lanka, six months in Greece. So there was. It was an adjustment to being here because we know it was kind of our choice to be here, yes. but um, which is incredible that we had that choice. I know, I know, and we all feel super lucky. Yeah, well. yeah. super lucky, super grateful. But then, you know, when it's kind of like, okay, well, I don't know about traveling at the moment for one reason or another. Um, yeah, it's like, okay, well, I'm here. Because I mean, what make, what what did you find weird about? Um, it wasn't so, I think weird is probably the wrong word. I think it, it was just, uh, it's just something I wasn't really used to just staying in the same spot for mm. such a long time, even though we were all, you know, having fun surfing or doing yoga or like partying. And, well, there's more of that going on in Sri Lanka than ever before. Well, when it's not COVID anyway, but um, safety, yeah. first. <laughs> safety first, yeah. No, but um, yeah, I guess, I guess it was just different compared to the lifestyle that uh, I was used to. I mean, you still get to meet international people on a regular basis, but I guess what was different this time was that um, you know, I was seeing everybody like more long term. So there was like, uh, there was a chance of people becoming family, so to speak, like a second family. And um, yeah, yeah, and it has, and it's been, well, uh, and this is going to be a chapter, I think I speak for all of us, like this is a chapter in our lives that we're going to cherish forever, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess it was just like, uh, I guess it, it just felt like, a, like a, a very, like a snap kind of change in my life, I would say. I think that's kind of what made it a little bit, um, again, I don't want to use the word weird, but it, it just kind of made it a little bit slower for me to adjust compared to maybe other people, I guess. Mm -hmm. But the thing that really helped though was that, like, so many people, well, the vast majority of people were so, like, open-minded and, like, it really didn't take that long for people to bond with each other. Mm -hmm. And I think, like, 
as soon as we move to the east coast because we're currently in the south right now which it, which it still has a really good community and with people being very close but I think when going to Aragon Bay, because we were all pretty much on one street, I think that made us become even closer because we were literally seeing each other every day, you know what I mean? Um, it's interesting because, yeah. um, so this, this is when you went, you, you guys left what, June? June 2020? Uh, After the lockdown? Yes, uh, May. May, May course, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and I stayed in the south. And it's it's a bit more spread out in the south, yeah. and I felt a similar way in Rugby. It was the people that was in the south. It was much more it felt very grounded, you know, and the relationships. Well, like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> deliveries. <Yes>. Uh, <laughs> um <laughs> Someone's ordered a blender. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a big one. Big one. Um, uh, you know these relationships that you that you form. Yeah. I felt personally very very grounding. Yeah. And one thing I noticed about the, because you know when you've been coming for a while and also spending six months here, you still create really great bonds with people that do here, live here long term. Sure. And the relationships that were were kind of almost taken to the next level very naturally it was somewhere between almost like an intimate relationship you'd have with with somebody sure. on a on a on a more um, of a of a couple side totally, but obviously yeah. without being a couple yeah. and somewhere between family mm-hmm. you know yeah i think that pretty much sums it up yeah yeah you can be yourself but you know sometimes we know with family we're Yes, and actually this leads me to the next question that I wanted to ask. Uh, are there any, like, you know, there's obviously a little bit of gossip that goes around sometimes. Uh, that's like the only minor negativity, uh, I think. I mean, even though I haven't really experienced it badly personally, but I, I know that there's a few people who talk about it, so I'm just wondering if you see that as one of the only negatives, I guess, to an expat community. Gossip is everywhere. Yeah. Expat. Or in the village you grew up in. That's true. You know, That's true. It, yeah. human beings, we love to talk. Yes. Look at us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tim and I, we'd love to meet for a cup of coffee yes. more or less once a week, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. we could sit and chat for for hours, which yes. you know we do. And yeah. whether that's and we we're just fortunate that we we see that perspective. No mischief fact, involved. By the no, way. exactly. <laughs> we we're not naturally gossipy people um but some people do whether it's they don't realize they're doing it it's yeah not that's true that's very true yeah they maybe are not so mindful about it. when we're talking about someone whether it's positive or negative you may believe this or not but, but people can feel that yes you know they can feel it somewhere inside of them you know that your ears are burning yeah come from somewhere yes so you know talking about someone as if you would talk to them to their face yeah I guess that was one thing that made me like um, that was that was one of my only reservations I guess right. really was was that aspect of being in this. so what's brought that to your awareness about the um, I don't know just uh, I, I think another reason as well is because like well when I was in Thailand in Koh Tao like a few people who have actually been a part of this community here in Sri Lanka who I met in Koh Tao before they were living there as diving instructors and like well a couple of them were telling me last year that one of the reasons that they left Koh Tao to come here was because they felt there was too much gossip going on there so when I heard that I thought uh, oh mm, yeah hopefully that's not going to be you know too much of a regular thing but Nah, to be honest, it's been all right, I think. Yeah, I mean, and I think, I believe, you know, you look at cultures across the world. Yeah, you, were, you were right in what you said earlier on about the fact that it, go, it just goes on anywhere. Yeah. You know? And often it's come from boredom. Yes. Or yes. something they're not happy with in their own lives. Yes. Like watching a soap opera, you know? <laughs> Uh, people love yeah. a soap opera for a reason. Yeah, yeah I know, I know. I've never and, got it, to be honest. But. You know, 
personally, it's when you're when something's happened and you know people are gossiping about you. This makes you more conscious yeah, to gossip sure. about other people. I think I think the other thing as well is that you feel sometimes that you don't really want to make. I mean, I'm not saying that you walk it on eggshells when you're in this community, but I think there might be some occasions where you think to yourself, right, I don't want to, I don't want to make a mistake because, because like we're all part of this big group, word possibly will get around and then, and then it might put, it might put you in a bit of an awkward position. Yes, yeah, just be up. nice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, I mean, that's all you have to do at the end of the day. Yeah. Really? And yeah, wherever you're living, whatever, whatever whoever you're interacting with, someone yeah. you're closer with, someone you've just met. Yeah. It doesn't matter and yeah, just be. I think the bottom line is the Rosie is uh, like the positives outweigh the negatives by quite some way. You know, it's it's like at the end because of the bonds and uh, the connections that you make. Like uh, as we were talking about earlier on, you know, that's what makes it very very special. And um, you know, and, and there's there's been many many times where all of us have been reminding ourselves in our head or even by words how lucky we feel to be in this kind of environment, you know, particularly during, you know, this very, very strange and dark-ish kind of time in human history, you know. So, um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I think to wrap it up as far as I'm concerned, we'll get your view on it in a moment as well. But for me, um, I think it's what's been really nice about this is that even though it, was a, it took a bit of adjustment in the beginning, I think I've really found out now that yeah, this is the kind of environment I'd like to be in, like long term, because I think when you get older, as a traveller, your motivation slightly change. I mean, it's amazing when you just travel many different countries while you're in your twenties, but there is a point where, yeah, you just you do need some kind of change, but you can still maintain this lifestyle, but just in a different way. I, I guess that's my big take out of it, and as a result, it, it makes it very exciting knowing that there's a new chapter coming up. Although I think a new chapter's already started, I should say, really. And, uh, but, you, you know, you've actually embraced it and you feel comfortable with it and stuff. And, uh, you know, even, even if you are like, like a natural nomad, you know, at the end of the day, we're still social animals by nature. So, you know, having good connections is very important. Good connections, and we've, you and I have shared this many times, we're remaining authentic. Yes. And that's, Maybe darker chapters come, sure. but they're lighter yeah. overall. You know, yeah. you go. We go through them for a reason. Greater awareness, we right? Go through them for a reason because they end up being positive most of the time, anyway. In fact, those experiences lead to you being ready for you know certain situations where if you hadn't gone through them to begin with, then you may not be prepared. So always yeah. be prepared. Always be prepared. <laughs> All right, we'll wrap it up there. Well, thank you so much, Rosie. It's Thanks been lovely too. chatting. Pleasure that, to be here. Yes, yes, it's been great to have you here. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it and it's given you like a bit of an idea what it's like to be in an expat community. And yeah, I, all I can say, guys, is that, you know, there's many different types of ways that you can enjoy the traveling lifestyle, whether you do it in a nomadic way or whether you do it this way. So. Yeah, just keep an open mind, I guess, and uh, you do whatever's best for you, really. All right, so I'll see you on the next video. Ciao. Nice that was cool. I really liked it. Yeah. yeah.